Shalom, brothers and sisters. And as always, all honor and praise and esteem goes to Heavenly Father Yahweh in the name of Yahusha HaMashiach. Brothers and sisters, this is um, the video that I said I would put together and talk about um, some of the free energy things and uh, things that you can live more sustainably on, not according to their sustainable plans that they're putting together, but just you uh, living a more uh, governed, self-governed, sustainable life, prepared for anything, any emergency, or just to be off the grid, period. And uh, there's more freedom in that, even though they're, there's going to be a fight ahead uh, for you to comply with their order and their their plans of um, getting us under full control, brothers and sisters. So right here in Jeremiah chapter um, 29, <clears throat> starting with verse 4, it says, Thus saith Yahweh of hosts, the Alua of Yahshua, unto all that are carried away captive, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem unto Babylon. Build you houses and dwell in them, and plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. Y'all see the significance of this? Now, right off the bat, this means... Get you some land. Build houses on them. Dwell in them. Plant you gardens. Now this is when we was carried off to Babylon. And eat the fruit of them. Eat the fruit of your land. So in having fruit, then that must mean you got a water well dug somewhere or you have access to water. And the Most High is the one who makes sure, is going to make sure of that. That this comes to pass. Even in the land of our captivity brothers and sisters. So you have to believe in him over everyone else. And he also says take you wives. Wives. For those who's talking about. Uh, well I'm going to leave that subject alone. But anyway he say take you wives. So men take you wives. And beget sons and daughters. And take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands that they may bear sons and daughters that you may be increased there and not diminished. Now, these are things that you're supposed to be doing in the land of your captivity, brothers and sisters, if it is possible. If it is possible, you might be going through some other trial or tribulation or you might be caught up in serious slavery where you don't have those rights and freedoms at the moment but right here it says and seek the peace of the city whether i have caused you to be carried away captives how many of you are praying for the city you are in praying for peace in that city or are you focused on uh damning your enemies to hell right now this is something I started to do. Praying for the peace of the city that I'm in. And the people that's here. Why? Because I was commanded to do so. And I don't mind at all. Praying for the peace of the city. I don't care what's going on in it. The Most High told me to pray for the peace of the city. And that's what I'm doing. And pray unto Yahweh for it. For in the peace thereof shall you have peace. Now, if you want peace in your city, I mean, if you want peace, period. Wherever you're living in a house or apartment in that city that you're in, you have to pray unto Yahweh for that city to have peace. If you want peace, that's just like saying, if you will not forgive, you will not be forgiven. So pray for the peace that you may also have peace. For thus saith Yahweh host, 
the allure of Yashara. Let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you. Neither hearken to your dreams which you cause to be dreamed. Brothers and sisters, watch out for your dreams. Watch out for your dreams. Pray to save yourself the most high before you hearken to anybody's dreams that they had. Or even your own. And don't be deceived by any of these preachers on YouTube telling you, Oh, you got to stock up and survive these end times. Stock up. They set you up for failure because you need to be underneath the hand and protection of the Most High to survive the end times. And then he will lead you and guide you into what all you need to do from that point forward. But um, those who want to prep for the end times, go ahead and follow your idol masters that you're listening to. I'm going to follow the Most High. But there's nothing wrong with preparing your household to be self-sufficient and prepared for any emergencies. I never had any problems with anybody doing that. Growing their own food at home. Harvesting their own water, uh, making some free energy devices and stuff like that. Now, there is another verse that talks about this same thing, but this is a future thing that's going to happen in the future, right here in, in Isaiah chapter 65. And, uh,. I'm just going to read 17 and go down. For behold, I create new Shamayins and a new Aretz, or earth. And the former shall be, shall not be remembered, nor come into mind. Now let's skip down to, uh, right here. Uh, verse 21. And they shall build houses and inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as in the days of the tree are the days of my people, and mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. This is what's going to happen in the future when we return to our land, brothers and sisters. We shall build houses and live in them. No more will they be taken from us. We shall plant vineyards. And they shall not be taken from our land shall not be taken from us. We shall eat of the fruit of our own work of our own households and hands. Brothers and sisters. We shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble. For they are the seed of the Baraka of Yahweh and their offspring with them. You and your offspring will be Baraka for now on, brothers and sisters. From that point forward, the Most High gathers us, purges us out, bring in those who are his into the land. From that point forward, Baraka be your living and your life forever. He, he'll be done with us and our land. Then he's going to deal with the Gentiles. It's time for them to have it, have their uh, butts handed to them. But anyway, let's get back to this here. Let me show you. I collected a few videos here about free energy. And there's a host of new videos, brothers and sisters out there. Uh, let me part, start with the newest, state newest. Oh. Okay, anyway, there are multiple ways if you do your homework and investigation that you can um, have free energy at home. There's plenty of videos out here like this one here, which uses a car alternator and he has a belt attached to an electric motor which powers 
or could power your battery banks. And if your battery banks are hooked up to some type of conversion device that converts that DC power to alternating power, you connect that to your um, home grid and you can run your own house from that. So something as simple as that. Of taking a, you know, your, your car battery charges. I mean, I'm sorry. Your car alternator charges the car battery up and keeps it topped off. The same concept can be used in a bigger uh, electric generator, which is just like a car alternator, a smaller car alternator. If you get a big enough generator similar to this and put uh, an electric motor to turn that belt to turn this generator, you can bypass solar panels and all that because solar panels are expensive it's expensive y'all look at this people are spending fifteen to thirty thousand dollars falling for this gimmick right now and they don't need to spend all this money Oh, get paid over $2,000 after install. But they don't mention how much you're going to be paying for the full price, do they? Where's that in the fine print? I can't really see that, but I bet you after they examine you, you're going to be paying fifteen dollars to $20,000 when uh, if you spend a couple of thousand dollars, you can build up your own home system, power system. Easy. And you don't need a big generator. Let's skip this ad. Because there's a whole lot of people falling for this in Texas because of that freezing storm that came through. You know, I live in Texas. And, I, yeah, I went through that freezing storm. But I didn't lose power. I lost water because of the pipes bursting. But uh, my pipes didn't burst. My place didn't get damaged. I didn't lose power. So I still was able to heat, have heat in my home. And I thank the Most High for that. Hallelujah. Hua. But um, Dallas uh, and uh, Fort Worth area and other areas around there in, in the north in Texas, they had one heck of a time. They had to burn um, their toys, wooden toys and wood furniture and just to, just to stay warm. They weren't prepared at all for this. And so now, here come these power companies, and here come these solar companies. And a lot of them are getting solar panels, not thinking that when the next winter storm, I mean, it's good to have solar, y'all. It's good to have solar. But if a winter storm hit and your solar panels ice over, how are you going to, how are you going to thaw them off? So that it can still uh, receive sunlight. How you? What's going to happen when your battery power runs out? If that storm lasts a week, and your battery power power is only can only last twenty four hours, what you gonna do then? So these people are going out there, not doing their research and homework. And getting a fuller understanding of uh, how they can do this even cheaper than what these people are doing. Because you can put together such a system. Something like what this guy is putting together right here. Look at that. He has two alternators here. Two alternators. All he need is a belt, which he has, and a motor. Now, one of them, I believe he's converting into some type of motor or something like that. Uh, but in any case, he's showing you how and what, you know, he's giving, he educating you on, on this setup. 
and whatever he's doing. But in any case, uh, there are a lot of videos showing you how to do this. Now, there's also a video of a guy um, who is using spark plugs. And I'm, I'm going to show you that. I'm just going to give you a brief overview of that video. But as you can see, I got other videos on my playlist here. Uh, the use of H, uh, 2 H2O, H2O generator, which can produce enough gas, hydrogen gas. It's, they call it HHO gas because it's not pure hydrogen, but it's a blend. And there are people running their trucks and cars off of the off of that idea. And there's a host of other amazing things like uh, this guy who makes uh, all in one free energy portable solar device. So please check out this free energy playlist. I'm going to be adding more videos, uh, especially with the guy with the spark plugs. And I'm going to see if I can pull him up right now. Uh, Okay, this guy FK Tech has videos such as this, which he demonstrates on how to put this together using spark plugs and magnets to produce free power. And of course, some of y'all know about Tesla and the Tesla Towers. If you don't, look him up. Look up um, Tartaria as well. They used to have free energy back in the day. In the kingdom of Tartaria, which was a worldwide system, a worldwide free energy producing system. Brothers and sisters, they had free energy back then. So look up the Tartarians uh, and, and understand, get an understanding that right when the European nation started taking over, they started taking down this system as well. And that way that they may be lifted up in the world in these last days, brothers and sisters, just as they took down others. So go and check out this particular video and other videos of his good understanding of um, these different methods that's out here that people are producing free energy from. You don't have to go without power. It's as easy as having a setup like this. Four spark plugs with two magnets on it and running your wires to a plug-in device and then plugging in um, things such as TVs and refrigerators with this particular device. And as always, brothers and sisters, use your own discretion and while testing these things, test with old devices that you have. Something that you uh, wouldn't hurt you to lose. Always test with old things first. And test in the open area. If you don't have a fire extinguisher, have a way to um, be able to extinguish uh, anything that, that you test. And while you're testing these things out. And most of all, get an understanding of everything before you actually try to attempt these particular things. Um, if you have a house with a garage, do it in the garage, open area, and be prepared and get a good understanding. Now, once you get the hang of it and you got a good understanding, your confidence levels are up, do hook everything up professionally. Brothers and sisters, even if you got to call someone who is an electrician, and especially if they're an electrician in your family, or you got to take an electrician course yourself, do that as well. There are plenty of elect electrical um, courses on different sites. Uh, but anyway, 
uh, I always follow the advice that they give on these particular videos. Uh, this guy here, he's from Nigeria. And there's a lot of inventions coming out of Nigeria. A lot. There are, there's a guy in Nigeria who's turning plastic into gas. He's taking ca uh, plastic and turning it into ga uh, gas. And there's a guy um, in Ghana who uses um, plastic waste to build houses. What he does is he, he breaks up the uh, plastic into a fine powder like mixed and he mixes with sand and some concrete and he's using that to build houses with 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 all the waste that's there he, he has a plan to clean up um all the plastic that's wasted out there in ghana that's floating around or in the cities or so he has plenty of free uh plastic uh, or there are plas there are companies that are buying plastic uh, are selling these plastic bottles, collecting them and selling them. But there are companies out there as well in Nigeria and Ghana that are taking plastic and making towels with it. They're making roof towels, street towels, floor towels out of plastic with a little sand. And they can make it in different colors. I'm telling y'all this so y'all can start investigating these things. And maybe um, if you want to start a company that does the same thing with plastic. There's plenty of free plastic to go around. But it's just, if you get your connects right. You get your um, barrels set up. Plastic barrels. Plastic bottles set up in certain neighborhoods, locations. And uh, with the city and other agencies or communities you can collect free plastic and have your company go around gathering it melt it down blend it learn how to blend it with the sand and and you can make such products as they are making brothers and sisters but anyway i just thought i'd mention that because that's um another innovative uh thing to be doing to recycle or plastic waste but in any case um, this way you can have free energy at home free lights y'all just think of the possibilities now of course the powers that be are they're gonna eventually try to fight this but you do have the right to have alternative energy because there's a bill there was a bill passed by Obama for alternative energy now of course they want to regulate this power control and this power shift to alternative energies they want to have full control of that so they want you to put solar panels and they want you to use solar panels and they want you to use um, wind power, their wind power. Not so much as your own wind power. And uh, these people here are going to make a lot of money in the solar panel industry. Let me skip this here. Okay. But in any case, um... You still can have your own alternative power, but you must do it professionally. And uh, you must have fire extinguishers and other things available to um, at your home so that they won't come there and do an inspection or some sort and call your home a danger or something like that and strip you of everything that you done built up. But we know that that may be still something they're going to do anyway in the future. Now, enough about that. What about free food? You still have the right to grow free food at your house. 
Uh, I'm not sure if some cities are requiring you to file to get some type of certificate or, or pay some type of fee or something to be able to grow your food at, at your house. Uh, you have to check with your city on that. And as far as apartment complexes, some of them don't want you growing no food at all or even pottery plants. Uh, or it must be uh, limited, very limited in apartment complexes and what you do there. As far as the free energy devices in apartment complex, um, uh, you would have to check with the apartment complex and see what type of storage devices they approve of and uh get those power banks power supplies and um if they approve of the solar generator get your solar generator that you can set out with with a with with um, a power bank that can be recharged and put that thing in the sun and you can still have power that way depending on what the apartment complex approves now they approve of some type of uh, generator uh, electric generator whereas possibly if you set it up correctly you can use that thing to recharge your batteries whatever type of batteries you have in your power bank to power your devices in your house such as your fridge or recharge your phones uh, you have to check with your apartment complexes or if you're in a rent home, you have to check with the people that you're renting a home from and do everything professionally so that they know they would know that their their place is safe and they won't be, it won't burn down because of some rush job, some rushed or, or some unprofessional looking wires that you hooked up and they slipped off and caught something on fire you know they want to see that their place is going to be safe from you so keep that in mind brothers and sisters but back to um food growing your own food we know uh, that's a good thing brothers and sisters but don't do it if you're doing it for to survive the end times Oh, I'm growing food. I'm getting all this stuff so I can survive the end times. Don't get weapons of, you know, all these weapons saying that, oh, I'm getting, I'm getting prepared for the end times. Cause I'm going to be blowing me some heads off around here. That let them come here. It's going down. No, if you're going to get some weapons, just get some weapons just to be protecting you and your family. And leave it at that. And the Most High will be with you. Y'all understand? He will be there to defend you. Don't be out there listening to everybody out there telling you this. Prep for the end times. Get you a hole in the ground out there in the, in the wilderness. Let me tell y'all something. They know everything about you. What you're doing. How you're doing it what you're growing they know everything don't think they don't even those out there in the woods preparing for the end times the three years or seven years whichever one they believe in they're out there preparing for that with guns and weapons and storage and underground bunkers and holes in the ground and caves and all type of stuff. They're preparing to survive their times. Brothers and sisters. Now even in the land of Goshen. The most high protected us. And what we had. But we was living. We were just living. That's all. We had our houses. We had our food. We had our cattle. We had water. The most high protected all that for us. We knew he was calling us out. But you didn't see somebody going around preaching. Oh, prepare for this time. Store up your food. Store up your water. No, we was preparing to get out of there. 
that's your focus now. Prepare to get out of here. But uh, in the meantime, you still can be living off the grid. You still can be grind, uh, buying your own food. Or if you still want to be on the grid, that's fine. At least have something to repower, I mean, to power your fridge, to power your devices, your cell phones and stuff, to power a fan or something. That's fine in, in, in the case of emergencies. And those who got houses, harvest rainwater as well. If you got property outside of the city where you can dig a water well, uh, there are methods of finding water underneath the ground. Find those out. There are some who get um, those uh, two metal two metal pieces of uh, like coat hangers or something. They cut them in half and they bend them in such a way. And they walk the ground and they put straws at the end of the the, the handle part where they hold it so that the that the um the two pieces of um wire I mean metal metal hand coat hangers are free to move and they walk down the property and once those things cross each other make an X there's a stream below and you can tap into that for water. And there are other methods to find water, deep water. Brothers and sisters, if, you, if you're in, way out there and you need to find water that's real deep, uh, there are methods of finding that. But if you have a home where you can um, harvest rainwater with your rain gutters, harvest it that way and, and put you some filters on there. And store water just in case you, you always will have that water available free free water of course after you build the stuff spend the money to build or buy your barrels and uh, get all the um, PVC pipes to run correctly and all that once you spend all that money you you just maintain the equipment and harvest the free water that's available to us. And once you build these free energy devices, all you gotta do is maintain them and harvest the free energy that's available to us. So right away, you, you can take care of energy, food, and water, depending on where you live, what you're living in, and where you're at. I've seen this, some videos where this Chinese woman who lives in China, she is multi-talented, multi-skilled, lives off the land. Now, of course, she lives off the YouTube channel now because her channel is so huge. She's making a lot of money from the ads and, and uh, whatever else she's selling. But this woman knows how to do so many things. She she makes furniture out of the, the things that's available on the land that she's in on. She she collects she she uh she's a farmer. She farms and she harvests food all around the um her area. She makes blankets, quilts, clothes. Have animals on her uh, property. Her, her family and her grandma. If any, if 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 the power went out, that wouldn't affect them at all. If the water stopped running, that wouldn't affect them at all. If the grocery stores shut down, that wouldn't affect them at all. If something break, that wouldn't affect them. They'll put their skill and talents together 
and put it to work. I tell y'all, the reason, one of the reasons why the enemy of our soul is moving faster and faster is because knowledge has increased so much that we are waking up to a whole lot of things that they have hidden from us. We're waking up to the changed history where there once was a society that, that lived off of uh, free energy. They they made free energy. They even had free energy weapons as well, which only the very top elite have access to that knowledge. And of course, they're using these energy weapons against us in all manner of a different type of ancient technologies. There's nothing new underneath the sun, y'all. What has been done before is being done now. So, uh, thank y'all for tuning in, brothers and sisters. Check these things out. Uh, I'm going to add some more of these free energy, electricity uh, videos to this playlist on my channel. And uh, I'm going to start building up other playlists such as a uh, free water playlist uh, my, uh free food free farmers play playlist you know there's a lot of people out there who's putting a lot of videos out on how to farm and how to live off the grid off the system that we have grown accustomed or depended upon for so long and and the enemy knows that this is direction that a lot of us are going into so they're hurrying to put things in place especially with the use of this virus uh, they're taking advantage of that virus that came out and hit where they made new laws and everything concerning that. Uh, and they're fenced to try to lock down people from going places if they did not get vaccinated for that particular virus that is out. And they're going to try to stop you from buying and selling. And if, if you... Uh, I'm not saying that's the mark of the beast, but it, it's a forerunner to it. It's a good forerunner and a good test for them to that final mark that will stop you from buying and selling. See, right now, they're going to try to stop you from buying and selling in stores, but you can still go online and purchase things and, and you can still work online. There's going to come a day when that mark you're going to have to have it to do anything. You're going to have to have, they're going to have a system for you, even for you to access the internet. You have to have the mark to log in to the internet. You're going to have to have the mark to um, be in the house, to be in an apartment or even a rental house. You're going to have to have the mark to go to the grocery store, to walk down the street, to drive a car, to travel or fly anywhere. You're going to have to have the mark. Because everything in the world is going to be tied into the system except for those who are outside of the system living out somewhere in the wilderness or something or on the run from this system out there. There's coming that time, y'all. It's getting closer and closer as we see they ramp up their wickedness even more and more and as they cheer themselves on and in their own pride and arrogance toward the lake of fire. As they think in, in their heart, 
that they ain't going to have the the world that they desire. That they're going to have their kingdom. They think that they'll be able to overcome the most high. They are already preparing the minds and hearts of the masses around the world for invasions by aliens, which is going to be the Most High's son and the messengers and his Kodashim, his, his set-apart ones with him, coming down onto this earth. They are already preparing the minds for war against this threat. Which is no threat for us. It's 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 a redemption for us. It's it's um the mercy and favor of the Most High coming back for a set apart Kodesh ones to bring us back into our land, and it, for uh, the Mashiach to take all the crowns of the earth. For there will be one King over all the earth that the Most High have set. brothers and sisters so y'all prepare your souls for that and this is just a small look at what's all available out here brothers and sisters do you do diligent homework do your testing if you can try this and try that but always do it unto the most high Yahweh. and with that i'm gonna say shalom and y'all endure to the end